Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 6, Acid Base Reactions, and this is video number 10, Measuring pH. As we've looked at previously, there's a number of the tasks or the outcomes, learning outcomes that are required of you that actually involve the carrying out of experimental work, uh, not just the application of your knowledge. This is another area where it's important that you are involved practically in identifying um, the different pH of a range of acid, base and neutral substances. So again, this video just gives you a little bit of background, hopefully just to um, remind you of some important things about the pH scale. pH is an idea that's over 100 years old, um, pretty much uh, originated from the work of the Danish chemist uh, Soren Sorensen and uh, his biochemical application of the effect of hydrogen ion concentration on enzyme activity. And you remember in a previous video we looked at the fact that in biochemical systems, in body systems, uh, the pH is very important in a number of different types of places in the body and for a large number of chemical reactions which occur within the body. So the idea that hydrogen ion concentration could actually impact on enzyme function uh, was a pretty important idea and one that really um, needed to be explored in a lot of detail and one about which we are still learning uh, even 100 years later. It was Sorensen who created the pH scale. Now people get kind of caught up with what the P in the, in the pH scale. Um, so you can uh, talk about this as a probability of hydrogen, as uh, of hydrogen ions, as a proportion of hydrogen ions. The most important thing we need to be aware of is the fact that pH is a negative log scale. It's a log base 10 scale. What that means is the higher the value of the hydrogen ions, the lower the pH. So a pH of 1 is stronger acid than a pH of 3. So this is how this scale works. You get smaller and smaller and you get stronger and stronger acid solutions. Uh, it took a little while for us to be able to measure or to, at least to build uh, technology that was sufficient for us to um, conveniently measure pH. Um, in the 1930s, we were able to develop, or scientists were, oh, I didn't, uh, were able to develop um, sensitive millivolt meters which were able to use electrochemical uh, means to uh, measure pH. So we had this pH scale. Now we have a number of ways of measuring this in the classroom and you'll have the opportunity in the laboratory hopefully to explore uh, pH through pH uh, meters, uh, through data loggers, uh, and also through universal indicator. Now it's important that you think about the relative degrees of accuracy of each of these devices, particularly when we talk about things like calibration. Uh, whilst we can just use a solution like Universal, which is very convenient, uh, either as a solution or as a paper, um, we get a lot more accuracy out of our pH meters and data loggers. But if we don't calibrate them properly, if we don't standardize them to what we would expect for solutions of known concentration, um, then the values can be very accurate, but invalid. So important that we make sure that we're aware of how to use these devices and how to get the most out of them. This is just a, uh, a quick scale to give you a bit of an idea of what we talked about before. The fact that battery acid, for example, is an extraordinarily strong acid. It has a pH of zero. And yes, pH, um, I guess, commonly goes from zero to 14, but it, uh, we can have values that extend beyond that, both um, into the negative range below zero as well as above 14. But this is pretty much the scale that we tend to look at and tend to think about. Hopefully you'll find some common substances on this pH scale and the colors are, are pretty much correspond to the sorts of colors you might expect from universal indicator. Um, and also they give you an idea of the concentration of hydrogen ions with a comparison of uh, to distilled water. So if we set an arbitrary value of zero and of course 
we don't have zero hydrogen ions in distilled water so just important when we look at comparative scales um, that sometimes we set standards in order to make comparisons which are not necessarily the absolute ones. We'll look at how we calculate uh, pH later in this um, part of the module and um, and then you'll see obviously that the concentration of hydrogen ions in distilled water is not zero uh, but this just gives you a bit of an idea so 10 times as many constant uh, as many hydrogen ions in a pH of 6 as there is in in water 100 times in a pH of 5 and one tenth in a pH of 8 so just gives you a little bit of a comparison without looking at the absolute numbers at this stage what's more important is to have a look at some of these examples cleaners soaps um, uh, drainers, drain cleaners, ammonia, all up in the base range. Uh, there's a few different things that we use commonly, like toothpaste, which is slightly basic, counteract the uh, acid of our saliva, or at least some of the foods that we eat and the bacteria and, and that the bacteria that grow on our teeth, hopefully not, um, may produce. Uh, but also things like coffee, uh, acid rain, and acid rain can actually get well below um, five. Um, hopefully it won't. <laughs> Uh, tomato juice, different types of juices, uh, vinegar, and then uh, stomach acid that we've talked about previously, and battery acid. So just a range of different substances. As I said, this particular one is more about the practical, so getting the opportunity in class to look at a number of different types of substances, common and otherwise, and to measure and record their pHs. Thanks for watching.